Hello, guys. Myself is Vandana Salve. I have been working with Alex Systems like almost more than 20 years. I have done uh, driver development for various subsystems like networking, embedded uh, devices, uh, ARM SOC boards, and various uh, kernel subsystems as such. And I am also been recently uh, uh, getting involved with the uh, uh, open source presentation. I, this is like my fourth presentation uh, uh, in open source submit as such. And this time uh, I decided to do some ramp on sessions for uh, for the newbies and the presentation who want, would want to know about the kernel tracings as such. So my today's talk, I am going to co cover the basic tracing tools and utilities that are uh, that we can get started up with, like uh, as such. So, so the overall agenda is like I plan to cover up the um, uh, uh, tracing tools like S trace and F trace as such. So, and then understand what are the different options that are available. Uh, with those uh, with these tools and how it is helpful for tracing and debugging the applications as such. So, just to get, to get started with, like uh, what is a tracing as such? So, tr basically, tracing helps us to log information over the pro program's flow as such. And uh, uh, to elaborate, is like uh, when we add the prints, uh, print messages into the code as such. To debug, uh, to debug the flow as such. So what we are basically doing is like we are adding our own tracing system altogether. And as the project goes development, as for the requirement and how the flow product flow goes on, the debug prints can be added. And uh, this all these debug messages they are the static trace point as such. So, and it like it works for a particular project, but it won't be. It is not very scalable as such. And for that, instead of having the individual or a, a, a static um, tracing system, what a uh, uh, project uh, can do is like use the tools that are already available that provides the, that can help for later analysis as well as like to store the log and then work on those uh, logs to understand the analysis of the code flow or to debug the code or to get more statistics from that uh, execution of the programs, okay? And that's where these tools, S-Trace and F-Trace are useful. So, uh, uh, what is S-Trace, what S-Trace is and how it is useful for uh, monitoring and debugging as such? So basically, this tool is to trace system calls and signals that are uh, that are being uh, used in the uh, the system call that are part of the application as such. And this tool, the backend, it has been implemented using the Ptrace system call, which basically does the work of tracing the live processes. And uh, why, when, uh, when, how do we decide when to use this S trace? Like, what are the what what kind of uh, answers it gives to the questions like what are the different system calls that are implemented in the application or what are the files that are being touched by that application and uh, along with that the information like for a particular system call what is the input parameters in arguments uh, that are there uh, that are being passed and what are the written values that are coming from what is the result of the system calls like whether it was successful or whether it failed and if it is failed what are what are the different causes or the reason for that uh, system call failure altogether and uh, so here we are talking about the system calls like uh, system calls are the ones that are been used by the application user space applications and Basically, they are the mechanism uh, to go and talk to the kernel that does the pro uh, higher priority uh, uh, work as to, uh, altogether. So whenever the application wants to go and talk to the hardware or to the kernel, it goes to this system calls. And um, based on the different resource management, there are different system calls altogether, like more than 400 system calls that are present in the Linux kernel. and uh, if we can, if we want to get more details, then we can do a man page on sys sys calls as such. 
unfortunately, uh, some issues with my laptop where I was planning to show you the demos and go through the um, execution that I would not be able to do it right now. So it would be more uh, verbal things that I would uh, be presenting as such. Uh, so, uh, the, 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 the system calls that are being used in the applications, they are not directly the system calls, APIs as such, but rather they are like the, um, or the wrapper around functions uh, that, are, that are part of the standard library, uh, libc as such. So basically like um, the applications that goes and makes the calls uh, into the wrapper function that is part of the libc. Uh, standard library and the standard library goes and talks with the kernel interface that goes and actually uh, executes the system calls. So what does this library uh, wrapper around function does is like it packs the system call arguments all together into the uh, registers and uh, puts the unique system call number into, and then makes the, um, then flips the user mode, the application which is executing user mode uh, to the kernel mode. And then the uh, kernel mode, then the remaining part is gets executed into the kernel space as such by executing the corresponding system call handler. And each of these uh, different system calls, they are being identified by the unique uh, system call number and the kernel maintains the table uh, or indexes the uh, system call handler based on the uh, uh, system call number as such. And uh, here in this case, like when the system call gets executed in the kernel, it would um, uh, return back, uh, it will perform its operation and then correspondingly based on the execution flow, it will return back the written values. Uh, and whatever the written uh, uh, output that has to happen. So, uh, okay, so system, S trace interprets and records the system calls which are called by the process and also it also interprets the signals if the applications are receiving the signals. And basically like when the output of the S trace is like, um, it, it, it outputs the information in form, in a symbolic form as such. Um, like it, uh, it gives the system call names, its arguments, and what is the written value. Again, like if the uh, system call is uh, passing the input parameters, which has number of different flags as such. So those flags, uh, uh, if there are multiple flags, then bit uh, whatever the bit mask uh, are together, that uh, everything is displayed so that you get to see like if a particular, now here in this case, the example that I've took is the open system call. Yeah, the application basically is opening this libc, uh, libc file, that .so.6, and um, uh, for that open system call, uh, the flags that are passed is like read only and uh, close exact. So these are the input parameter that goes to the open system call. And then the last parameter that equal to three, uh, it's like the return value. The open system call, when we make the, we expect when it's successful, it returns the file descriptor. So here in this case, this is the number three is the file descriptor. That is that is the written value of the open system call. Okay. Now, if the system call has not been successful, then it returns the error that is a minus one and uh, a corresponding error number has been set as such. So here in this case, the if you take the access uh, first uh, line, here in this case, uh, it is not successful and uh, the reason is that this particular file, preload file does not exist. That is no such file or directory. That is the uh, corresponding text um, string uh, corresponding to the error number that has been written as part of that system call execution. And along with that, like if the uh, particular system call is using, passing uh, a structure as such, a uh, structure has a lot of members built in that case. All that structure is can also be uh, what structure and its contents can also be seen as part of the output of this um, S trace command. So here in this example, I, F F star does not have that, so it's not seen. But basically, like uh, let me see if I have another example. In that case, I, I'll, I'll uh, let we'll see that if, if there is. Okay. Okay. So here. Uh, in this case, uh, I wanted to show with a small example, like a hello world uh, program that is uh, uh, right 
uh, now here in this case, like uh, we see the example, which is a simple printf statement, which would do the work of outputting that string uh, on the standard uh, standard output as such. Uh, so when we uh, execute, uh, when we want to go and trust this program as such, what all, what all system call that has uh, been uh, used by this particular application. Now here in this application we see we are directly not using any system call as such. The printf is the function. Uh, basically it's a, it is not a system call but it's a library function which is part of let's say and the, uh, the difference between system call and the library function is library functions, um, they are implemented as part of libc and they might be implemented within the libc itself or they might go and make a call to the system call as such. So here in this case, like when we do S trace um, this, uh, uh, after compiling this program as such, what basically um, we see is that uh, now when we are uh, 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 first, the first line uh, of this S trace is the exact uh, V, uh, which is like the, um, the shell is loading this uh, hello program as such. Uh, and uh, loading into that, that's where this exact uh, uh, view comes into picture and the input parameters uh, that is the program that is getting executed along with the other parameters that uh, and that particular system call takes as such, okay. And uh, when, when, you, when, uh, when you see the elaborate, uh, when you see the output of the S trace, it like it contains lot of uh, lot of system calls other than the exactly the code that has been implemented. So basically, that those those are the set of system calls that are I don't have the detail log as such, but that is there to load these shared libraries. Like uh, application one, it is uh, executing now. We are in the hello world. There is nothing we are much using as such. So there is not, but but still it will be loading the shared uh, libc library and the corresponding any uh, libraries that it is there. Okay, and then uh, eventually at the end, uh, what we see here in this case, uh, we see that libc has been opened and its contents are being read, loaded into memory, and then there is a write system call that is going, and if you see the parameters of the write system call is like it is uh, using the file descriptor one that is standard output, and the string that is hello world string that is there, um, that, is, that is the second parameter of the write system call, that is the buffer or uh, the static buffer and the, uh, the number of bytes that would be read. So the printf uh, eventually has gone and made a call to the write system call. So that's where when we do a S trace on this, this uh, application, hello world application, we would see this. And then there is another system call that is exit group, which is, um, which has been called by the exit uh, library function that is there to successfully complete the execution of the program. So here in this case, what to just to summarize that is, the S trace output uh, shows the name of the system call, what are the input parameters that are being passed, and the return value. So here in this case, this for the write system call, this 12 is the number of write, uh, uh, basic function of write is like, it returns the number of bytes that has been written. Uh, means I, either to the, uh, the uh, to the file, the, here the file is a standard output. So the Hello world uh, is that uh, contain that is the twelve number bytes as such. Okay, and in case of uh, error as such, like here in this case, we see that uh, it uh, displays the corresponding error string as such. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So this is what we talked about. Okay. So basically, like the small uh, hello world program that boiled down to two system calls that is write and exit group as such. So here uh, means, um, I just, uh, at the end. okay, so here uh, the S trace uh, uh, is just uh, tracing the program that has been given as the input parameter and we just logging the, uh, all the log S trace log by the minus O option. Now another thing is like if the application is um, has a child process, so by default S trace does not tra traces the child process as such. So uh, that if you if the application has to be traced with the uh, child process it has to be traced, then that can be done with this minus F option, and um, 
Okay, so here is this uh, simple uh, program where we create one child process using the fork fork system call, and then just print the uh, ID uh, PID process ID of the child process in the uh, in the child process as such, and um, the parent process is just waiting for the child process to complete as such. So. Um, uh, when we uh, do a, uh, a trace on that on this uh, particular application, uh, here um, here's a simple output that says that it just shows the parent process ID and the child process ID. But like if you look into the into the log a trace log of that uh, uh, child, uh, in that case, what we see that uh, the output shows the process IDs like the uh, the instruction that are being executed by the parent process and the child process as such. So here we see there are two uh, PIDs that is 2946 and 2947. So where uh, 2946 is the parent process and 2947 is the child process. So each line of the trace uh, it has been prefixed with the corresponding PID. And uh, here we are in the application we use the fork fork call. So fork is uh, basically a wrapper a wrapper function that basically goes and calls the clone system call inside the kernel. So that's where we see this as a clone system call. And then uh, the, uh, in the application here uh, the parent process is just waiting for the child process to complete. So the right, uh, right wait, uh, wait is again a library function or wrapper or function uh, which uh, around this wait, uh, wait for system call as such. So here we see that the wait system call has been called, okay. Mm. And here you see like uh, 47 uh, in that case the instruction that is this uh, PID of the child is executed. Uh, it's, it prints that, it's basically not just printing that one sentence, uh, one statement as such, okay. Then again the parent process, it has been, uh, it is waiting and then um, uh, after the child gets terminated, uh, it resumes back as such. And also you can see from this is like the, um, the parent process received the sick child signal. Like when the uh, child process complete, it sends the signal back to the parent process, and that is that 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 uh, signal signal uh, capturing uh, information about signals are also been captured as part of this S trace. This S trace will also capture the signals that are received by the process. Okay, now here in this first example, what I have uh, the exa uh, the co uh, this is a simple uh, application but it can uh, it can receive the input parameters like if you want to execute uh, some different function uh, by the child process that it will do through this exav so here for in the first example the input was not given but like if we uh, again execute the same process then um, giving the command or the application pwd to be executed by the child process so here in this case Mm, I just have the, just the snippet of the trace as such, but that will help uh, to explain that. Um, uh, okay, so here in this case, uh, 30, 30, 16 is the parent process, uh, and the 30, 17 is the again the child process. So here, uh, again the uh, okay. So here in this case, uh, AXAV is like if you look at this um, input parameters, it shows that um, in the name, uh, the then the name of the process and the parameters that are been passed. Like here we are passing this bin PWD as one of the parameters. So those are all things. And here one more thing is like in the in the S trace along with minus V, I've also given minus V option that is verbose. Like if you want to basically by default the S trace uh, abbreviate, uh, 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 does not shows all the all the number of parameters, it uh, just abbreviates them. So if you want to have the detailed information like here by giving minus V verbose option, we can see that the third parameter that has been part is the environment. So, what are the different environment variable that goes to uh, goes when a new process is created and executed? 
all those things, all that information is been captured when we uh, go to for a more verbose mode with minus B option. Okay. And uh, yeah, so here again then um, uh, the clone system call that creates the process and uh, when the child process executes first it prints the PID okay, and then it uh, calls the AXEV as such. Now here in this case the AXEV is like we have given the input parameter that's PWD that is uh, print the working directory. So that um, a particular application will be executed and it just prints the working directory as the output as such. Okay. So this way uh, a child uh, child processes can be uh, traced with the help of the uh, as traced specifying the option as such. Okay. So along with that there are different uh, filters that can be used uh, uh, for tracing as such. Like um, if uh, if you are um, if uh, in a given scenario, like if you want, if you suspect that there are some particular system calls that are been pr given problematic as such, so in that case, uh, by default, the uh, S trace gives the flow uh, traces all the system calls as such. But if you want to do uh, trace only a specific system calls, then those can be specified with minus E option. Just uh, just give the uh, n number of system calls that you want uh, as the output of the S trace rather than every other every system call that is part of the application as such. And again uh, like uh, we can categorize, we can do the tracing based on the category like uh, if you want to trace only the system calls that are taking file name as an argument as such uh, like the system calls open, start, trunk or change mode all those things. So that can also be specified with uh, minus, uh, minus e trace equal to file that is a file category. Similarly, like if you want to trace the system calls uh, involving process management, all the process managers system calls then which are like clone, AXEV, wait for, exit, SS, all the process related information that tracing can be done with specifying trace equal to process. Then similarly for the network related system calls, the, the, the system call that is socket, bind, listen, accept, send message or essence. If, if you tend to say that there is some problem with the network flow or um, trying to debug uh, network performance and as such and those things uh, corresponding system calls can be traced separately by giving these filters. Similarly, we have the filters for memory, ma memory management as such. Okay. I would have been really happy like to show this demonstration uh, of those things. Uh, uh, but I don't have that access so unfortunately that we will not be able to see. But these are the commands that can be used through which we can see like uh, when you ca case of memory management like um, MAP system call or MLOC uh, system call, M product, th uh, those system calls uh, traced uh, can be collected. Also like you can do filtering based on the path name or uh, filtering based on the signals that uh, that have been captured by the applications okay. And similarly like if you have to express a particular pro uh, live process PID then that can be specified by uh, minus P option again like uh, as for the, the security uh, rules that uh, you can only trace the process that are owned by you as such. And uh, uh, to get the overall system, uh, summary of the system call, uh, we have this uh, uh, nice option called minus C option, which, uh, which gives the overall um, uh, execution time, the counts uh, time, as well as number of system calls that are, number of instance a particular system call has executed and the overall report of that uh, application, what are the different system calls and how much time it took. Now we are just I took this snapshot of this um, ls command that is executed. So here it shows that um, these are the uh, number of system calls that are being made. Mmap called 19 times um, and so on. And again like if a particular system call has failed then those are been the count has also been shown here. Okay. So this helps to give the overall stats, uh, stats, status of the application that is running 
with the uh, again this uh, having this time information helps to understand like what particular system call uh, uh, whether it has uh, in, uh, incurring any latency or as such okay 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 so that summarizes the um, s rays as a tool to collect the information and use for the further analysis okay now uh, let's um, look at uh, another tool that is the f trace f trace is the function tracer that is part of the linux kernel which was added uh, um, uh, sometime back in 2008 by steven rothbard and uh, the development and evolve uh, it has been evolving since then as such so basically it's a function tracer that's let you watch and record the execution flow of the kernel functions. Once here in S trace, what we from the application we can see only the system calls uh, execution flow. But like if you are um, if you want to get into deeper into the kernel functionality and see what particular kernel functions, uh, what uh, uh, the status of that in that case F trace is useful. So what it can do is that it. Uh, you can trace the function calls and find out which system calls are called when you run particular application and it can also uh, profile application with uh, uh, measure execution time and find out the bottlenecks as such okay so let me okay so to use a phrase like the f phrase uh, uh, is built with, uh, will be useful when it is built with this uh, GCC's uh, P minus PJ option that is uh, performance which uh, allows uh, when when minus GC is like it allows to prepare the, the machine instruction to the prolog of every function a non inline function and uh, and with uh, with that with that it helps to redirect the execution of the f trace uh, trampo uh, planes or the plugins that are being implemented okay and when this tracing is enabled uh, 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 when the tracing is enabled it will generate the trace events and the data as such which can be collected uh, collected and stored by the f trace in the in the ring buffer in the kernel ring buffer and all that info data is um, available through the virtual file system called as a word stress stress fs file system which uh, will be available uh, basically it has to be mounted and that's the where usually it sits in this is kernel tracing path as such so and that's where uh, it provide that is the interface uh, that can be used by the application to do the tracing altogether and uh, as it is like um, the interface is a file system interface then uh, you basically it helps to provide the simple file operations and tools like echo and cat to interface with that uh, framework so here is another sn snippet i've taken that is uh, we mount the file uh, stress fs uh, onto this uh, sys kernel tracing path and uh, if you look into that it shows the different files that are there that provide that is the interface to the f trace as such okay. so what uh, with the help of the f trace what uh, what can be traced as so it, we can trace the kernel events and the different traces so the events kernel events they are they are they can be static or they can be dynamic like uh, static uh, uh, events in the kernel that provides the various data and it's like um, it comes with a lower a lower overhead as such uh, but the drawback is like the trace code is limited and it's it is like the uh, it is defined at the build time as such and the events can be dynamic that is by using k probes implemented through dynamic probes injected at runtime and this kernel events they are broken down into different categories or groups like 
the events uh, from for the scheduler subsystem scheduler as such or networking subsystem mem member uh, uh, power management or interrupt as such that means based on this you can apply different filters to get the events for schedulers or networking or uh, inter management as such and uh, as they are built in the kernel, uh, uh, um, defined or uh, implemented in the uh, as a build time function, uh, you can just if you do just grab onto trace underscore, you'll see like a lot of um, uh, kernel, uh, trace uh, events are being added in the kernel for the various subsystems as such. Okay. And tracers are another for that is provided specific functionality like uh, by specifying the filters to trace only the functions or function graph as such in that case traces can be used okay uh, so here uh, uh, just to show you about the how the events can be used means first is enable the events like we uh, echo uh, we, uh, write one into this uh, uh, switch now here in this case uh, particularly I've taken the example of uh, scheduler switch whenever the uh, uh, process switching takes place and if you want to trace all those kind of events then in that case we mm, uh, we can we, uh, we go and write one into this particular switch uh, scheduler switching enable flag as such and then um, by using the uh, the kernel buffer as we say that f trace logs all the events uh, into the kernel buffer uh, ring buffer as such and that ring buffer can be re, uh, can be read uh, through this uh, trace file okay so you can just do a cat or less on that trace tra uh, trace or trace pipe uh, these are the files through which uh, all that uh, f trace output is seen as such okay so here in this case a particular um, snippet here uh, it it uh, shows all the information uh, it tracks uh, <coughs> uh, events information whenever context switching or process switching is happening all that uh, are being captured and here particularly uh, to understand what exactly this information uh, and the, like uh, here it is giving the process task process id and this is the name that the pid on which processor it is cpu it is executing and then uh, which is the previous process previcom previcom is the this name of the previous process that is executed it's pid and uh, other information altogether. So what all this format, that information we can see uh, from this another um, file that is event format, uh, what all that information is exported or uh, been available. So here in the format file, it shows that what are the different fields, uh, what this different fields uh, uh, corresponds to as such. Okay. And here again in one of the, uh, yeah, so here in, uh, in this case there is one, one field called as the state field that, uh, that, uh, that uh, contains the information on the process uh, state as such. So here in this case we see that the, what is the different state whether the process is in the sleeping state or um, the other states and like if you want to get the information of the different, what are the different uh, process states like if you can do a ps command uh, it will show you the process states the different flags as such or moreover if you do man page on proc fs it also provides the detailed information what this x means what t means and the different values altogether okay so from this uh, mm, that helps us to understand like what are the things that are going uh, uh, during the process contact switching Okay, now this the, the uh, that was the output that we get from the F trace as such. So basically, to get that information, the the event that is uh, uh, that is causing like here in this case again we are still uh, talking about the uh, switching uh, function as together. So here in the scheduler, this is the um, address uh, event that gets called that is uh, uh, tra uh, trace schedule uh, switch which uh, generates those events as such okay now this uh, now if 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 as a kernel developer or as a subsystem when you want to implement this uh, events as such uh, 
uh, for mo uh, monitoring that flow or, or as such. So, that whole uh, implementation is uh, supported with help of the trace event macros as such. So, the, the trace event macros has to be implemented into that code flow as such. And um, uh, so, this is like particularly I just taken a snapshot from the schedule.h header file where this particularly uh, trace event uh, is there been defined for the uh, schedule switch uh, event as such. And uh, if you want to explore more and uh, know how that has that can be implemented, then there is um, uh, sorry, it's not a sample uh, spelling mistake is happened. So it's a sample directory, the trace events uh, in that directory we have uh, some sample code. You can take a look at that and compile and see how that trace uh, event macros are being implemented and that can be used as a starting point to implement further into your drivers or kernel subsystem wherever you want to. Okay, now um, that was about the kernel events and let's look at the traces. So traces define the functionality uh, inside the kernel for tracing functions or enabling latency tracing as such. Again, now here in this case, uh, to enable the tracer, uh, like suppose a function tracer in that case, so what we have to do is we have to echo the function uh, uh, into that current trace. So what uh, by default uh, uh, it is knob, there is uh, uh, no uh, tracer been enabled. So here by using this echo function, what you are doing is basically enabling the function tracer. Okay. So once that is done, okay. So here, uh, uh, and once it is there, then you can check the events, uh, tra uh, events by using the, uh, by doing cat, cat on this um, trace, or uh, cat, cat trace or cat trace pipe as such, where you would see all the kernel functions that are being executing at that moment. Okay. So uh, you, and in this. Uh, uh, thing there is uh, there is a line that shows that when the schedule s switch is getting got executed as such okay uh, so another uh, uh, okay here in this uh, function we see the uh, functions that are been executed now uh, with the help of this uh, graph function graph tracer that allows uh, uh, it, it shows it shows the code flow as such. Uh, uh, it not only traces the function entry but also the return of the function means it shows the complete flow how the func the function that is getting executed and the output is in like uh, C C code style uh, information with the uh, with the time duration that each of this function has taken the time for execution. Okay, so this helps us to see if there is any bottlenecks or the delays uh, taken by particular uh, code as such or function such okay ah uh, yeah means the, those were pretty straightforward like function or function graph as such again the, there are multiple filters that are available uh, for like tracing uh, uh, for filters for a particular setting by pid or uh, uh, other particular function like suppose you are implementing some driver, uh, RDC driver or something. So, you uh, want to trace only those functions as such. So, that can be set up with the F-trace filter options as such. Okay. And similarly, uh, now this again like going for the particular uh, subsystems like scheduling or networking based on that set those filters and then uh, collect the trace information. Okay, so here uh, uh, events, just to summarize the uh, traces, uh, events and traces, events are the static points, uh, whereas traces add functionality dynamically and uh, you can have your own, own options as such and again traces can also include the events as such and um, the dynamic events, they are same as the static, but they are not created with this trace event macro as such. They are injected uh, uh, injected through the breakpoints and k-probes is one of the framework that has been used. And this 
I read, um, I don't plan to go into much into K probes as such. So I'm just putting up the information that you can look at those um, documentation as such, or uh, to get to know more about the K probes. But that is the main framework that is as the background for the dynamic events as such. And this is just to summarize like the F trace is the kernel framework that is there. And uh, uh, okay, so this is uh, the this is the trace command is the front end to the F trace, like you can use that by the application. Again, it's been developed by Steven Rustin. And that's I think that's the time up. So I would stop over here. Any questions? I could take one.